Yo, what's good everybody? Got another super video on tap for you guys. Trying out a new GoPro media mod, so I hope the audio is actually a lot better in this video. I'm hoping to go to this setup rather than using my DSLR for a lot of the simpler stuff I do and some more day-to-day -day videos. Uh, Want to keep the DSLR for nicer things, but welcome to the channel. If you're new, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you like what you see. And to those of you guys who have been here, Welcome back, time to put some work in on the Supra. We got a pretty subtle mod that would make a noticeable difference in the quality of life in driving this car. However, this is gonna be a bit of a different route from what most people do. A lot more OEM plus-ish and way more functional reform than what most people go for. Now, before we get into the mod, let me show you guys a couple updates because I did get into a really big project with this thing that uh, I wasn't even ready to film myself doing it. So I'm gonna show you around the car and show you what we've done and then we'll get to the main bread and butter of this video. All right guys, so looking at the car, first glance, same old, same old. Uh, however, all the changes were in the interior right now. I'm gonna show you guys real quick. First thing you may notice, that Sparko steering wheel right there. Picked it up from a good friend of mine and uh, Got a NRG quick release set up on it now. And the horn actually works. Everything works just fine on this setup. So this was done since personally I'm not the biggest fan of the way the Grant steering wheel looks for one thing. And for another, I actually do have an issue where, and I thought this would fix it, but if I turn right, the middle becomes like right here right now of course the wheels are turning but while driving the car if i take a right turn this becomes I, I mean i'm not explaining this very well if i turn right sometimes my wheels will be straight this way if i turn left and then try to come back to the middle sometimes my wheel will be straight this way this is a little bit exaggerated of an angle but this is generally what's going on with the car and so i thought maybe i was having issues with the grant steering hub that used to be in here um, but that's not the case, so we're gonna have to go back to the drawing board and figure out what's going on in here Also, we put new turn signal stocks on here with the new clock spring um, And that's part of what helped getting the horn working what was in this car was the nicer more desirable 89 and up Turn signal stock, but the clock spring wasn't really fully functional Neither were the connectors for the horn to work with a aftermarket steering wheel Whereas this one, we set it all up correctly. And so this was part of what we did here. Um, of course, Gen 2 quick release, short hub, and the steering wheel. I have not drilled the steering wheel yet to properly fit my rolling anti-lag switch. I gotta do that. Um, maybe even in this video, because um, I'm pretty tired of having a zip tied like this. There were a couple of events I went to, so I just went ahead and set the car up to get it out there. I hadn't driven it in too long. Um, so yeah, that's... Uh, the big thing we did here for the steering column. Other massive change you guys will notice, which you might have peeped in the corner of your eye when uh, I did this earlier, but we got a Kenwood Double Din in here. Of course, this is kind of temporary because I practically designed the entire system in my head for the car revolving around having a five channel amplifier in the car. So I do have a JL Audio 10 inch sub, which I'll show when we get around to doing the five channel setup. And right now I do have some JL Audio CL series speakers. I'll pop the trunk to show those. Um, Cause we do have them in the doors as well. I have the six and a half inch pods in the front and back here we have the five and a quarter, which you have to drill new holes, but yes, this will hold in the speaker and you'll get a good sound. Highly recommend putting some sound deadening to uh, just make sure everything is sealed nice and tight and you get the best sound quality you can. And yes, the interior is like half naked right now, of course, because I do plan on taking everything back apart to run the five channel stuff. Um, we got a really nice amp and sub going in. We got the spare tire mount here, uh, which we cut to fit here. That's what we've been doing. Uh, it's been a lot of work, um, but yeah, gonna be well worth it because it's nice having a fast car, but if it's not like a trailer queen, uh, some of this stuff is really, really necessary. And also inside, we've been trying to figure out what is causing the blower to not work in here. Um, we're getting closer to it, but it's gonna take a little more work. We thought it was gonna be this amplifier box right here. 
and I purchased it changed it and nothing's happening still so probably some more teardown is going to be needed there as far as the radio this is a Kenwood DMX 9707S got a great deal on it on offer up picked it up threw it in the car and this thing even comes with wireless carplay and the sound quality is beautiful for just having no sub at all in here it's pretty damn crazy I'll go ahead and play something for y'all and uh, see what y'all think the rock music super free As you can hear, pretty decent for bare bones, no sub, nothing. Honestly, I can definitely say I'm happy with it for not having any of the stuff that should be in here already in here. All right, so real quick, let's get to what this video was really supposed to be about. Pop them up. Oh, and that's another thing. We put a new retractor relay. We have uh, our pretty much stuck in an infinite cycle of up and down uh, pop-up issue. Resolved for the most part, however, the left one still doesn't go down. Leads me to believe maybe when I installed the motor initially, maybe I installed it incorrectly. I'm not too sure what's going on there, but we'll check it out. Let's get to the good stuff today, though. So you're probably guessing what's going on. Now well, we're popping the hood, and I got my lights up. In here, we got a headlight upgrade. However, I did not want to go the more hot boy Ray Briggs route or HID LED conversion. I figured I want something that's just going to work and be as efficient as possible in terms of lighting the road and also just keeping the car simple. I didn't want to overcomplicate things. So here we go. In this box, I got from Daniel Stern Lighting, which, which some of you who have been in the game for a really, really long time are probably familiar with the name. I have some Kyoto h4 headlamps glass of course um and this is just a proper h4 conversion rather than the old school uh sealed beam halogens that come with the car i have these bulbs phillips extreme vision pro 150 which are definitely a wider light than what this car has now the sealed beam definitely works but it just doesn't look that that pretty by any means and the lighting is supposedly nowhere near as efficient as these uh, Kyoto's right here, which you're looking at and right away you can tell a big difference. This looks freaking gorgeous. And also compared to getting Ray Briggs or something, which are uh, left-hand traffic lights. So of course you drive them in the States and then you're just blinding everybody. These are in fact right-hand traffic. So I would be able to aim them properly without having any big issues of <laughs> just people flashing their lights at me at night all the time because it's overly bright but in the wrong direction so yeah that's what we're going to be doing let's get to the install and just start taking the lights apart oh and this brings me to another thing we did that um was much needed because i really like when cars have their fog lights turn on but we got the fog lights working it was actually just a bad fog fog light relay in there now as for what these look like before you can see it's a much more old school yellow light and then you look at the fog light and the fog light is more white. All right, now we got our cover off and we can get to work on the lamp itself. So it looks like one Phillips screw on each side at the top. I changed headlights on my first Mark III, but that was a long time ago. And honestly, I took them right off and sent them back because there were some garbage like LED housings that A, looked horrendous, B, did not light up the road at all. So I wasn't happy with it, and that was the end of that. I never, never went for that again. All right, guys, so I assembled the driver's side uh, off camera just so I can get a full understanding of how everything works and know exactly what I'm expecting when I explain this to you guys on how to get the light changed. And as you can see, that is way more clear than the other side. And now I'll actually demonstrate the difference in the lighting. As you can see on the wall alone, you see it's much more yellow over there, much wider over here. And from the front of the car, this looks far more modern than what the passenger side does. Much wider and brighter versus the more yellow old school. And I don't know, it just looks a little bit cheaper to me too, the sealed beam look. But yeah, much happier with this. So now I'm gonna show you exactly what you gotta do to build your lights on that side and uh, everything you got to do to install them. 
Also had some complications with the hardware on this side. Let's hope the same doesn't happen over there. Um, so yeah, let's start up. Of course, simplest part first. Get your cover off. Very simple, four Phillips. All right, and now the four screws that hopefully aren't rusted to all hell and are somewhat easy to remove. This uh, frame actually looks to be in much better shape than the driver's side, thankfully, so it should make the process easier uh, when installing the new housing. Put your housing and get your connector off, which it's pretty straightforward. Just pull it right off. Let's go get our other one and I'll show you how to get it ready to be installed. All right, so it comes out of the box like this with this little cover on it to prevent anything from getting in before you get a chance to put your bulbs in. I'm using these Phillips bulbs that I showed you earlier. Go ahead and take your bulb, pop it right in. Well, it's got a pattern, yeah, right there. Um, no way to go wrong on it. It'll match up. You take your lock, put it on which I'm going to try it a different way. Make sure I get this 100%. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah, got all three in. And this is super tight now. No way your bulb is going to fly off. You are ready to install your housing like this. Also would like to add before installing, be sure to add this little grommet that it comes with to keep any water out of your housing. Um, I had forgotten to, I already had to pull this out, um, <laughs> so I'm putting it back in now, but yeah, you guys will see uh, pretty much the first install of it. Go ahead, put your connector, wow, this is freaking dirty, um, you can clean it, I'm not really going to because you never really see that anyway, um, yeah, now you're ready to install, and real quick, actually, before I assemble, let's do a side-by-side next to the old housing so you see the difference and as you see this is just massively prettier than this ever would be you want to try get it around the frame as best you can which depending on the condition of it might be easier or harder it's like the driver's side absolutely sucked to do this one is actually not too bad at all start with the top two actually to hold it All right, this one in. So we got all four starting to go in. I'll just finish tightening them all the way as they should be. And we'll have uh, both lights installed. Just got to aim them correctly at night, which is of course the most important thing when you get new lights. It doesn't matter how good they are. If you do not aim them correctly, you won't see anything or you'll see everything you're not exactly trying to see and get people flashing their lights at you because they're not aimed correctly and whatnot. So be sure to aim them right and you'll get the best result. Yeah, and here you might be able to see the screws a little better. One right here, we'll aim and then there's one in there. In here, you can probably see that now. That's the one that aims up and down. This one aims left to right. Let's give it a look. Excited to see what it looks like with both working and our fog lamps working. Oh man. Yeah, far newer car guys. This looks leaps and bounds better than before. I am way happier with this and I'm sure we'll probably get much better lighting as well on the road. I'm gonna go ahead and turn them off to get the full front view with both installed. And yeah, you can see that is much newer and much more Resto mod freshened up looks like exactly what the rest of the car kind of is as far as its theme and also a long time ago when I was trying to get the horn on my grant wheel working I had a horn get stuck because like I told you guys the clock spring was like slightly damaged so I actually reconnected I finally found the wire down there um, one of my buddies pointed out that my horn sounded a little weak and um, I actually reconnected it and so now you guys will hear the difference so yeah, lots of progress here on the front of the car. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the cooling tray off 
just so I can figure this out. So I might decide to cut the video here. If I do, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Stay tuned for a lot more happening to this car. And I've actually made some really big upgrades to my camera setup. So I really plan on some big, big projects in the near future. Just bringing a lot more quality content to the channel. So be sure to support it. Um, I really want to put more time into this and get this growing. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, share, and hope to catch you in the next one.